Uh, I have had a great time. I hope you have. You know, the interesting thing about when you talk about fear, you have to talk about how to overcome it a little bit. I don't know where you are, but when I really did begin to write out some ideas and put this thing together, it's when I found myself at a very terrified place. Uh, when things from your past seem to crop up or you're heading to new territory you never dreamed you'd be going in, you just get frightened when your kids are going off to college and you hope you've done well and uh, you got a new preacher. <laughs> you know, sometimes it starts with the little things and then all of a sudden you find yourself just terrified at every corner. Sometimes you turn on the television and something has happened in the world that has just stopped us all from breathing for a little while and you're terrified. I have found when I am most frightened and most afraid uh, to read it impresses my husband, who's always wanted me to read more. And, uh, but I will tell you this. I decided that I would end the night expressing to you from a, a, a passage from a novel that I just finished. And out of this novel came some truth and some knowledge that I wanted to leave with you before we said goodnight tonight on TV. And let me just share a couple of passages. It's a very profound book, and I want... Well, I, it was a hard book to get. <laughs> it's a hard book to get through, but I just, I think some of you need to hear this. So, if you if you've read this and you want to follow along, I understand. Once upon a time, once upon a time, there were three little pigs. <laughs> this is very serious. They went out to seek their fortune. The first went off, met a man with a bundle of straw, and said to him, Please, man, can you give me the straw to build me a house? <laughs> I, I thought that was odd, too. They didn't even pay for it. <laughs> Wonderful world they live in. So, which the man did, and the little pig built a house with it. Presently, long. <laughs> Presently, along came the big bad wolf, and he knocked. <laughs> and he knocked on the door, and he said, "Pigs, little pigs, let me come in." No, not by the hair. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> So I'll huff, and I'll and I'll blow your house in. That is so good. And so he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew the house in. The second little pig met a man with a bundle of sticks. And he said to the man, Please, man, can I have those sticks to build me a house? Very generous men. <laughs> and the man did. So the little pig built a house out of sticks. Along came the big bad wolf. And he knocked on the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. The little pig said, No! Chinny chin chin. <laughs> then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow the house in. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew the house. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> the third little pig met a man with a load of bricks. <laughs> Please, man, give me those bricks to build me a house with. So the man gave him the bricks to build a house with. Then came the big bad wolf. He stood at the door and knocked on the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, not by the hair of my 
chin and chin chin, then I will huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed and he, oh, no, this is, <laughs> this is where it gets really good. So he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. <laughs> but he could not blow the house down. Isn't that great? <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> Carefully, because it's really good. <laughs> Let me read another story for you. I like this one better. These words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life. Homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They're foundational words. Words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you're like a smart carpenter or pig who built his house on solid rock. The rain poured down, the river flooded, the tornado hit, the big bad wolf showed up. But nothing moved that house because it was fixed to the rock. One of the greatest things I've learned in my life is we cannot tell the wind to stop blowing, but we hold on to the one who created the wind. We cannot change every phobia and fear that crops up, but when they do, we run in the house the one we have built around ourselves with tools like trusting in God and peace and comfort that the Holy Spirit brings into our lives and then we don't have to be afraid. You see, I believe a long, long time ago in the garden, God meant for things to be peaceful and good and kind and fun. And somewhere when that separation from God and man came along, fear entered into the world. Someday we will be with him again and there'll be no fear. Until then, we keep building a stronger house around ourselves. And Jesus comes and dwells with us. So we do not have to be afraid. You see, without Him, without relationship with God, we will forever feel incomplete. But with relationship with the Father, even on this side of heaven, somehow we feel complete again. And we don't have to be afraid. We never have to be afraid.